just as advertised on the club van, Crystal Palace it was, with many of the corners eased and the pits and paddock now between south and north tyre bends. The LCC had worked hard and left no stone unturned. Nick Syrett and Ian Smith cannot make up their minds about a club film this year. And back in the paddock, a similar air of uncertainty is apparent. Hope we get off the line forwards. The UDT Laystall team are there, with motor scooters to match. But who are those drivers? asks actor Donald Houston. But there is one we do know. John Ailey. He may be a little thin on top, but his driving is highly hairy. Nick sets out the silverware for the five races of the day. Raymond Baxter wonders what on earth they find to talk about. Well now, about this film. Meantime, the grid lines up for the grand touring car event. Two E-type Jaguars and two Ferraris, Berlinettas, share the front row of the grid. For two laps of the ten, Jack Sears led Roy Salvadori. With Graham Whitehead's Ferrari third. But Salvadori came through to win. Marshalling is thirsty work, and Bert Lampkin's about to wet his whistle for Bill Travers to start the Green Helmet Trophy Race for sports cars. And off they go. We didn't see what happened, but obviously Raymond did. The star of the film, The Green Helmet, stars in our club film as well, and waves the checkered flag to mark another win by Salvadori. The John Coombs entered Cooper Monaco gives Roy his second victory of the day. Travers in it, we'll have to make a club film. Main event of the day was the London Trophy Race. And that's the view of Salvadori the other drivers saw for almost all of the 37 laps of the race for Formula One cars. For the first two of the 37 instalments, UDT led Yeoman Credit. Tony Marsh moves up into third place, behind Henry Taylor, whilst out in front raced Salvadori. And here he is, taking ramp bend and on his way up to South Tower Corner. Behind him, Twisk of the Tulip Stable says it with flowers. Too much tiptoe and not enough tulips. Roy Salvadori makes it three in a row. Well, if we do make a club film, we simply must have Salvadori in it. And here he is again, in John Coombs' 3.8. Tommy Sopwith's 3.8 is driven by Mike Parks for the final event of the day. 
Powell also drove a 3.8. So too did Gawain Bailey. In all, eight Jaguars were running, which left John Ailey in a mini minority. Jack Sears led from Salvadoria at the start. Then Parks led, but lost a wheel to alter the scoreboard as well as the landscape. Hence the expression, Mike Parks. But someplace else, please. No good. He'll have to go. That must have done it. They've decided to have a club film after all. So, from Crystal Palace to our next location, our producer gives the word, boys, it's Mallory Park, or bust. And what a big bust. Meantime, let's have a little music from Morel and his single-seater piano. Mallory Park lies about 130 miles north of London and is one of the seven circuits on which the club organises its 22 annual race meetings. In its private grounds, there's a happy and formal atmosphere. People eat each other's sandwiches and borrow each other's welding plants. Nick Syrett relaxes for a moment. And so too does our producer, Cecil B. De Roscoe. But not Morel, he's hard at it. I say, excuse me, Psst. I, I say, don't look round now, but I think your piano's on fire. The meeting opened with a Formula Junior race and the drivers get their briefing. whilst final minor adjustments are made to the cars. Pritchard's envoy Ford is wheeled onto the grid. Don Truman holds up one of the new invisible plastic five minutes to go boards. Well, I told him his piano was on fire. But let's cool off with a drive round the Mallory Park circuit. 1.4 miles to the lap, it tends to be a driver's circuit, where too much power can be more of a hindrance than a help. Ideal session for the cars of Formula Junior. Pierce's Lotus led throughout to win an exciting race. Too bad you missed it. A berserk breakdown wagon gave the bridge a belt, but this was kid stuff up against the saloon car race. Rector 
Smith's Minor led at the start, ahead of Murfield's Anglia. But on the second lap, the Anglia takes the Minor. Ten laps, the duel lasted. The Anglia holding on to its lead, but only just. Last lap, and out of the hairpin for the last time. Murfield has the edge on Ratcliffe, and apart from a friendly nudge, it's all over, but what a race. too can have a body like mine. He too of the Formula Junior race saw Romain's Lotus lead from Reese's Terrier. Lap two and the Terrier lead. Third lap, and the Terrier is still top dog. Romain's Lotus is second. Eccles spins the Elva, and Woodley's Emerson shunts him. But it's only feelings that are hurt, and the marshals mop up the mess. Meantime, Romain's Lotus goes ahead of Reese's Terrier to take the chequered flag. And whilst Chief Marshal Noel Etches cleans up the circuit, officials check the runners for the FJ final. Jack Pierce led from start to finish. but there was plenty of exciting motor racing right down through the field. Gavin Yule has a moment with the MRD. Please, Mr. Mays, no language like that in our film. Brakel's Lotus leaves the hairpin, the flag goes out for Pierce. Why can't you cameramen leave a chap alone? But now it's time to go. All good things must come to an end. And when you've got to go, You've got to go to Brands Hatch for the international date on August Bank Holiday. The car park soon filled up. As a record crowd flocked in for the Intercontinental Formula Race and a full program of supporting events. The paddock too looked pretty full. Bob Anderson's Lotus Ford was there. So too were John Cooper and John Coombs. 
Anthony Marsh was talking to the drivers of Gentro Sud. And who wouldn't buy one if they could? Bill Moss was there. And Ashdown's Lola Ford. Pam Wallace paints the numbers. And also present was Jack Brabham, world champion of 1959 and 60. Shocking lack of space in the boot of these cars. And Bandini, too, is all packed up. But at least his car is in one piece. This chap has only just bought the kit. The Indianapolis Cooper is here for a tour of honor. And whilst Nick Syrett hands out instructions, Les Leston hands out parcels containing the Leston lead boot kit. Every one guaranteed to lower your lap time. In the interval, some of the cars modified and manufactured by exhibitors at the International Racing Car Show are paraded before the large crowd. The Racing Car Show is one of the brightest jewels in the BRSCC crown. It typifies the young and enthusiastic approach of the finest club in the country. for the start of the Formula Junior race. And, to a phrase, they're off. And some are more off than others. Mike Spence spins the Emerson, and John Brown's lotus body lies a mouldering behind. But the race goes marching on, and Peter Arundel's lotus wins from Parks on the Gemini. Mags Cooper comes third. Now the Grand Tourers come out. Graham Hill and Salvadori on E-types are followed by Peter Jopp's Elite. Parks comes up to the line on the red or East Berlinetta Ferrari. Next to him is Sterling, also on a Berlinetta. Down goes the flag and the driver's feet. The blue Berlinetta leads from the red one. And soon it's Moss way out on his own. With the E-types second and third. Further down the field, Les Leston and Graham Warner continue their season-long scrap, with Daddy-O winning from Love One. On the eighth of the 20 laps, Graham Hill suffered a puncture. and Sterling Moss drove home an easy victor.
Sterling steps up to receive his garland and the Pico trophy. And goes off for a lap of honour in an E-type Jaguar. And now for the big race, the 76 lap intercontinental formula race for the guards trophy. Odd sort of crash hat he's wearing. This is the big event and all the stars are here. Sterling. Bruce McLaren. Most of them just back from Nürburgring. John Surtees, Roy Salvadori, Dan Gurney, Marston Gregory, Jim Clark, Tony Marsh, Naylor, Bandini. And head and shoulders above the others, Innis Ireland. Tony Brooks waits in the BRM. Lex Davison's Aston Martin is wheeled into place. And there's just one minute to go before the guards trophy starts. And as they filter down through Druids, it's John Surtees at the lighted end. Moss is second and Marston Gregory third. Sterling's bend, and the order is the same. Lap four, and Heel moves the BRM up to third. Grabber moves up to sixth after a hesitant start. Moss chases Surtees into Paddock Bend. And Bruce McLaren nudges Marston Gregory. But the Cooper driver continues. Leaving Marston bothered and bewildered and something else as well. Now Sterling closes up on Surtees. And Jack Brabham is after them both. Bandini's Maserati makes a pit stop. And on lap 15, Brabham takes the lead. But Sterling wins it back. The leaders now are lapping the slower men. Surtees spins and retires. Moss retires as well with gearbox failure. The Cooper is wheeled away. And Jack Brabham's pit crew show him how far out in front he is. And Sterling gives him a signal too. One lap to go, and Jack Brabham on the Cooper comes through clearways to take the chequered flag ahead of Clark and Hill. Jack accepts his laurels at the hands of Mr. Bulpit, a director of careers, and the guards trophy too. Then off on a lap of honor, escorted by three guards there. To finish off an exciting day, the touring cars came out for the Red X Trophy race, with the 3.8 Jaguars making all the running. Must be something to do with the guards' trophy, I suppose, but McLaren's Jag has taken up smoking. Graham Hill lines up on our cameraman.
and the minis enjoy themselves as always. And there's McLaren again. I do hope he's not inhaling. So, yet another race runs out. One of many in the crowded calendar that each year the club provides for its members. 22 race meetings, not counting rallies and sprints and driving tests and the racing car show too and countless social gatherings. If you're not a member, why not join? The club will welcome you as a driver a spectator, there's a seat in the stand waiting for you, or an official. You might like to be a marshal. It's their devoted work that helps to make motor racing possible. <laughs>